Hello and welcome to Medical Dialogues. I am Dr. Nandita Mohan and today I will be talking about an innovative non-invasive technology to detect pulmonary congestion in heart failure patients. Now congestive heart failure we all know affects about 8 million people in India. It is associated with a high rate of admission, readmission and mortality with this condition. The signs and symptoms are largely due to pulmonary congestion. Now, early detection of congestion usually plays a crucial role in altering the course of the disease. Usually, congestion assessment is done using clinical signs and symptoms, which may even appear late. At present, there is no definitive non-invasive tool to quantify the same to help in clinical decisions. The REDS Pro Fluid Monitoring System offers a non-invasive, safe and rapid means of assessing fluid retention in patients which could be valuable in this regard. It works on the principle of remote dielectric sensing. So to talk to us in detail about this innovation, we have with us today Dr. Daniel Bensimhan, the Medical Director at Advanced Heart Failure and Mechanical Circulatory Support Program, Cone Health, North Carolina, USA. He has extensive experience in using REDS Pro for his heart failure patients and has several research publications to his credit. We welcome you to Medical Dialogue, sir. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's really been, a, it's a pleasure to join you. So let's talk about heart failure. What do you think is the current scenario as well as the growing importance of congestive heart failure in India? One of the things that I've been struck by here in India is, is the volume of patients, how busy the providers are, and how many patients uh, they're responsible for. And it's, uh, you know, adequately identifying these patients who's at risk and getting them optimized is so important to reduce the burden of, 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 of care on the hospital systems, but also, again, bringing it back to the symptoms that these patients experience. And they live with often quietly without complaining uh, until we actually identify the congestion and we treat it aggressively for them. You know, I think over the last few years, we've learned uh, a lot about heart failure and uh, sort of the, there have been a few topics that I think have really been very important. Uh, I think the first topic is we've learned the importance of guideline directed medical therapy, right? We've learned that for heart failure patients, getting them on guideline directed medical therapy is, is very good. The second thing we, we've learned that uh, like other fields of cardiology, that technology has really helped us uh, not only to better treat our patients, but to better evaluate our patients. And that's where the REDS technology is, comes in. We've now learned through uh, invasive hemodynamic monitoring, like the CardioMEMS technology and other technology, we've learned that congestion, we, we vastly underestimate the congestion of our patients and that we are sending patients home from the hospital after a heart failure hospitalization, very congested. People in the clinic, over 40% of our patients in the clinic are congested. And so we're leaving our patients at risk for, um, for further heart failure events by not dealing with their congestion effectively. And people say, well, you know, maybe we just need to be better clinicians. And, and the problem with that is, is that this, this congestion uh, often is hard to detect on clinical exam. Our clinical exam just isn't sufficient enough to do it. So having technology that's been developed to help us assess congestion has been very important. Very true, sir. So, sir, we all know that there have been many interventions for improving congestive heart failure conditions. Despite of these interventions like education, awareness, lifestyle changes that we all are emphasizing upon these days, there is an increase in readmission rates. What is your say in it? Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, for in, particularly in the States, you know, heart failure readmissions is, is an epidemic, right? So one in every four patients who gets admitted to the hospital for heart failure is readmitted within 30 days. And in 90 days, it's 40%. It's a little over one in two, are, right about one in two are admitted again in 90 days. So it, it really is a, quite a burden, not only for, for the hospitals, but it's a burden on the patients. These patients Maybe. spend a, these patients spend a tremendous amount of time going back and forth 
from the hospital center. They're not home with their families. They're symptomatic. So, you know, this, this, this problem of readmissions, we, we often worry about the strain on the system, but we need to really focus about the strain on the patients. And very true, sir. So as you correctly said, it all goes undiagnosed. Even if there is a very mild congestion, they neglect it so much that they don't need to visit a clinic or a hospital to actually get themselves evaluated. So if I talk about the evaluation of heart failure, there are many tools or techniques for its evaluation. Now, if you can tell us about RedsPro and how it helps in prognosis of the disease. Yeah, so one of the things, you know, there has to be, a, there, are, there are a few, uh, um, there are a few requirements for a heart failure device to be um, to be really effective when you're uh, when you're um, when you're assessing these patients. The first one is you really need an accurate sensor. You need to know what you're measuring, and you need to measure it accurately. So when you're measuring congestion, you really want to make sure you're measuring the right number. Not all of our techniques have been uh, have been so. And the other problem is is making sure that the reading is absolute. So, and what I mean by that is people say, oh, we'll just use a BNP and we'll measure with BNP and, and that's how I do it. The problem with BNP is that when a patient comes to the clinic for the first time and they have a BNP of 500, that may be perfectly normal for that patient with their age and the presence of atrial fibrillation and things like that. So we need to have absolute numbers where we realize with one reading, is the patient high or low? And then, you know, it, the, the numbers have to be, uh, they have to be, you have to be able to be actionable. So you have a number that's high and you have to be able to treat these patients and see that when I treat these patients that the number goes up or down quickly and is responsive to therapy. Once again, where BNP just doesn't do that. You have a lag in the BNP and you don't see a very, it's not very actionable. And then also you want to be able to say, listen, I can't rely on, on the head physician to make all the decisions. I need to have another, I need to make this technology easy and I need to be able to build algorithms around the technology. So if I give you a device, I give my nurse practitioner a device, I give a generalist a device, they can take the device, they can measure a patient and then they can follow an algorithm by which to treat the patient successfully and improve their outcomes. So it's, it's really essential that we now have these devices that follow these characteristics. And currently in the market now, we have really two devices that do that. We have a CardioMEMS device, which is a wonderful device, but it's invasive, right? Pa patients have to undergo a right heart catheterization and have a sensor in their pulmonary artery. And now REDS is our first non-invasive tool where we can do it at the point of care in 45 seconds we can measure any patient right there in our office. And when they come into the OPD and they're saying, I'm short of breath or I'm screening them, in 45 seconds, my nurse can get the number for me. And when I go to see the patient, I know if they're at risk or not. And then I can really adjust my therapy based on that number I have in hand with me when I'm seeing that patient. If you're giving a time frame of say 45 seconds, the assessment becomes highly accurate and it's much faster. So the rate of assessment is definitely getting quicker by this. If you sit with a, if you have 30 patients or 40 patients to see, you know, I was in the OPD today and I saw lines and lines of patients and, you know, we're taught to sit and listen to the patient's signs and sit, take a listen to them and do all the things. But sometimes when you're trying to be efficient and move patients through, it's just so important to know before I go into the room, are they having fluid or not? You know, it's like going into the room with a patient with uh, atrial fibrillation, right? And having an EKG in hand before you go into the room. I know this patient's in atrial fibrillation before I walk in rather than trying to figure it out. You have the information ahead of time. You can gear your questions and your treatments to that before you walk into the room. And, and likewise, at the time uh, in, in the hospital, if you're dealing with patients in, in the hospital ward, you're, you're, you're taking fluid off day by day and you're trying to figure out, is, are they ready to go home today? Did I take enough fluid off? Did I take too much fluid off? If you have the number before you go see the patient, you can actually, you can optimize your care um, very quickly 
and become very efficient and patients get discharged from the hospital at the right time to alleviate the burden in the hospital. And if you get them fully decongested, there's a much lower chance that they will come back to the hospital. You know, in some of our research we've shown, if you look at a, a we've done, uh, there have been seven trials at hospital discharge using this device. If you look at overall using the device at the time of discharge, we've been able to reduce readmissions by 64% on average in these clinical trials, over a thousand patients. That's a very good number, sir. 64% is actually a huge figure. So if you can further tell us how this machine works and give us details about its uses, which type of doctors or clinical setups will actually be benefited with this? Yeah, so it's a very simple device. You know, it's, it's built out of Israeli technology, and I will say it's simple to use. It's not simple to design. I don't think the engineers will appreciate that, but it's a, it's a quite a simple device that fits over. You can wear it over clothes. It, the current model fits over uh, the shoulder. It fits over the right shoulder, and it has uh -huh. a sensor in the front, and it has a sensor in the back, almost like a headphones. And there's an electrical sonar-like signal that goes through the right middle lobe of the lung and it measures the water content. It uses RF frequency to measure the water content in the right middle lobe of the lung between the sensors. Normal, um, it takes about 45 seconds to make the reading. Normal lung water ranges from 20 to 35%. So the patient comes into the clinic, they get their blood pressure, they get their heart rate, uh, they get their, their oxygen saturation and the nurse puts the device on and they give us a lung, a measure of, of lung congestion uh, for the patient. Uh, further models are being developed where you can have patches which can be used in the ICU and there's going to be a home monitor as well. well. Right now we have a device that the patient wears either in the OPD, they sit in the chair and wear it in the OPD, or they can wear it uh, in, in the, they can also be measured in the ward at any time in the ward. Uh, either during their admission or at the time of discharge. And in our hospital, we actually do, some, we're doing some work in the emergency department as well. So when we're screening patients, when they come into the emergency department and they're short of breath, we're trying to figure out, is this heart failure? Is this not heart failure? We can do a very rapid check and to uh, sort of get a feel for A, is it heart failure? And B, how congested is the patient? It's not just a yes or no, it's a quantifiable number of the degree of congestion uh, for that patient. And you said, who should be using this, right? Certainly heart failure specialists can be using this, but I would also um, uh, say, you know, as the population gets older, you know, 10 to 15% of our older population, particularly those with high blood pressure and those with chronic kidney disease are at risk for developing heart failure. So in the generalist clinic, uh, in the OPD, you know, having these patients screened for volume overload, and now we have medicines that have been proven, even in diastolic heart failure, to improve mor morbidity and mortality in these populations. It's it's the, the, it's upon us to diagnose these patients early. So if they're if they're older, they have risk factors. As part of their screening protocol, we feel strongly that perhaps there's a role to put this device on patients in, in, in the OPD. And the one thing I will, will say is that um, the device is simple to use. It doesn't require a senior physician to do these. There are so many heart failure patients that if you can train other people to use this device, provide them with protocols, then even junior providers can provide you know, very high quality, optimized heart failure care for all of our patients. So not just a few are getting optimized care. All of our patients are getting optimized care. And then I will say in, in, this, in the universities where we did our studies, it wasn't just the junior physicians who were, who were, who were um, underestimating congestion. In our hospital, we did a research trial. We showed that with our senior cardiologists, 43% of our patients were discharged from the hospital prior to full decongestion. So it's a really a tool that one, all of us can benefit from, but it, it helps us to allow to bring in more, more providers to treat more patients 
and optimize care for a larger group of people. That's really good. See, if there's training being given to all the professionals, then everybody is definitely going to benefit out of it for sure. So tell us about the availability of the machine, sir. How can doctors add this to their armamentarium for the benefit of the patient? Yeah, you know, the, 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 the technology is now spreading, right? It developed in Israel and now it's been spreading to multiple countries, obviously the States, it's in Russia and Japan and, multi and you're throughout Europe and now India, Terumo in India now has uh, taken over the distributorship of, of this device in, in India now and you'll, it's starting to become more and more available in, in centers in India uh, through Terumo and through their training. You know, one of the important parts of this device is it needs to come with some training, right? So they've done a, a remarkable job at not only de delivering the device, but also providing the training that uh, providers need to, to see it. So it's, it's going through, it's gone through registration now, and now it's starting to be deployed in, in hospitals. And we spent a, a good part of our time today uh, visiting hospitals in, in Bangalore and, and seeing how they were starting to use the device and improve care of patients. So I think you'll see it uh, really over the next year or so, more and more be hopefully becoming a part of the standard care of these heart failure patients. That's great, sir. So I hope, as you mentioned, that this is being vastly used in the States, Japan and Russia. And now in India, we will be looking forward to this technology being used in a large scale in almost all hospital setups. So anything further that you would want to add on about the application of RedsPro in India? No, you know, I think India actually is is is, is uniquely um, suited to benefit from this technology. I, I, I can't say over and over, you know, I visited numerous countries and uh, we've been working with this technology, but I, I, I've been so impressed with the volume of patients that physicians here in India have to see. And how do you, how do you quickly, and the wards are so full, the OPD is so full, how do you quickly triage these patients and really help move through with a, such a high volume of patients? And I think having the rapid accurate reading here uh, could really have could really make a huge impact uh, in, in India for the patient population and also for the providers. I mean, just it's such a it's, it's such an overwhelming challenge to take care of so many patients. So I really hope it can help improve the care and uh, also the efficiency of the system and as a whole save the system money because it frees up beds. It makes providers more efficient. And really, when you think about the, 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 the overall global cost to take care of heart failure, to really reduce not only the burden of the disease, but the cost of taking care of this disease in India. So I'm particularly excited about what the opportunity here is in India for us to really help assist with the management of heart failure uh, for such a large patient population. Any final takeaway message for fellow specialists? We've all trained extensively, you know, we've trained for years and years uh, to be master clinicians and we take pride in, in our skill sets and we take pride in how good we've become. And people say, well, I don't need a device to help me manage heart failure better. I'm a good heart failure doctor. You know, I've been doing heart failure for 20 years and always felt that I provided very good care for my heart failure patients. And then when I see this device and realize how much we've underestimated congestion, you have to take, you have to take a step back and say, wow, with the help of technology, I can do better. And sometimes I think that's hard for physicians to accept that a machine can help you do a better job. And I often relate it to the story with breast cancer, right? We have wonderful radiologists who are wonderful at reading mammograms, but if they use com computer assisted algorithms, they detect 20 or 30% more breast cancer by the use of AI and computer technology, which makes them better. It doesn't compete with them. It makes them better. And if you're, you know, if, if your family member is getting screened for breast cancer, you want them to have the benefit of that technology so we catch it earlier. Why don't we do the same for heart failure? Why don't we treat our patients the same where we admit to the fact that technology can help us be better clinicians and treat our heart failure patients better? The time has come for us to accept that help from technology. And I hope we see more and more uh, adoption of these technologies in the heart failure space. Very well quoted. So that's actually a key takeaway message for all of us here today. Thank you so much for all your valuable insights. It was lovely to be having an interactive session with you today.
Thank you very much for the time. It was an honor to join you. Join you. That's all for today. Stay tuned to Medical Dialogues for latest updates. Never miss a medical update from Medical Dialogues. Like, subscribe, and press the bell icon.